So you want to get into 3D printing, but the whole thing seems a little intimidating. Let's go over the basics. This is intro into 3D printing. So you may have heard that 3D printers can print other 3D printers, or you can replicate any object, or you can make an action figure of yourself. Or you may think that 3D printers only exist in industrial labs that cost tens of thousands of dollars. Or if you're on the techier side of things, you might have seen Prusa on the Face Friends or seen some 3D printed shoes or something like that. The truth is 3D printing has come into its own in the hobby market. And you can print in one color fairly easily for less than $500. If you're willing to spend around a grand, you can get a printer that pretty much does everything for you right out of the box. With all that said, 3D printers aren't something your grandparents are going to have sitting around the house. But if you're a little handy with tools and a computer, you can print some really useful and entertaining things. 3D printing is a real eye-opener. It's open doors for me, and I've been able to create things in this basement that I would have never thought possible. Let's start with 3D printer types. There's a lot of different types of 3D printing, but there's three more common ones. FDM, SLA, and SLS. FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling, is the most common type of 3D printing and the only one that I use. It's the cheapest and easiest to work with. It takes physical media, filament, it heats it and extrudes it one layer at a time to build the model. SLA, Stereolithography, Stereolithograph, Stereolithography, Stereolithography Apparatus. In this process, it uses a vat of resin and it cures it one layer at a time with UV light. There is some post-processing involved with SLA, but the resolution can be a lot higher than FDM. SLA can be done by the hobbyist, but it comes with a lot larger price tag and the medium's a lot harder to use in store. SLS, Selective Laser Centering. In this process, it uses a vat of tiny beads, usually nylon, and it fuses them together with a laser. When the model's done, you clean off the excess beads and you use them again for the next print. SLS is very cool because you can print any model with no supports, but SLS is still way far out of reach for the common hobbyist. So from here on, we'll be talking about FDM 3D printers. There are two most common type of FDM machine, Cartesian style and deltas. Cartesians move up one layer at a time and move back and forth to lay down the filament. It uses the Cartesian coordinate system. A delta still uses the Cartesian movements, but it has a tool head supported by rods, and the movements are made by changing the angles of the parallelograms that the arms form. Deltas have less mass to move, and the bed is stationary, so they can move much faster when printing. Both styles of printer have their strengths, but if I was buying my first 3D printer, I'd just go with a standard Cartesian style machine. It's a little simpler and easier to understand. So let's go over the main parts of a 3D printer. This is the tool head, or the hot end. This is the main business end of the 3D printer. First you have the nozzle. This is what ultimately lays the plastic on the print bed. They're available in a lot of different sizes to either print faster or print at a higher resolution. The nozzle screws into what is called a heat block. This is where the actual heat is stored to melt the filament. Then in the heat block there's a heater. This is either usually a 20 watt or a 40 watt heater that melts the filament. Then to monitor the heater you have a thermistor. This takes the temperature and allows you to monitor how hot the heat block gets. On top of the heat block you have a barrel or a throat. Some have a heat break in the middle. This is to help separate liquid filament from solid filament. From there, the barrel usually has a heat sink screwed on top of it like this. This is to help keep accurate extrusion temperatures. The heat sink will also almost always have an active fan to help cool it down. These are extruder gears. And this is the extruder motor. This gear is what actually bites into the filament and pulls it through into the hot end. Then we have stepper motors. Most printers have four or five. Stepper motors allow the firmware to keep track of the steps of the motor and how many it takes to get to a certain location. After the printer's home to zero, the firmware then tracks the locations via step counts. The build plate, or the bed, or the heated bed. This is where the plastic gets laid down layer by layer to build the model. You need good adhesion, and it has to be consistent and level to the nozzle to produce a good print. There's three axes on a 3D printer. There's the X that moves left or right. There's the Y that moves back and forth. And then there's the Z that allows it to move up one layer at a time. Controller boards. This is where the firmware is stored. 
This is the whole brains of this operation. With the firmware and the G-code, this is how it tells the printer where to go and how hot it needs to be to complete a certain model. These are MOSFETs. This is what allows this board to produce enough current to use the heated bed and the heater cartridge. This is a stepper driver. This goes on this board to control and power the stepper motors. This is your typical 12 volt or sometimes 24 volt power supply that powers everything on the printer. These run around 20 amps most of the time if you have a heated bed. And then you have the firmware. The firmware lives on the main board and the most common type is Marlin. The Marlin will tell the printer what type of printer it is and how it should go about interpreting G-code. G-code we'll get to in a second. Filament. Filament's the actual media that you heat and extrude to build the model. There's a lot of different types of filament out there, but there's three really common ones. PLA, polyactic acid, ABS, acryl nitrile butadiene styrene, and PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Different jobs call for different types of plastic. For the first time 3D printing, go with PLA. It's by far the easiest to print with. Your 3D printer is controlled by what's called G-code. G-code is literally just a really long list of commands that tell your printer where to go and how much to extrude. G-code is created by a program called a slicer. The slicer takes a CAD model, divides it up line by line, creating the G-code file. The models can be created in pretty much any CAD software by generating an STL file, a stereolithography file. It's the CAD model without all the textures and colors. So you create your model in your CAD software like Fusion 360, you export it to a stereolithography file, an STL file. You import that file into a slicer like Slick3R or Cura. That will generate the G-code. You put the G-code on your SD card for your printer and you hit print. This is what the side of a typical FDM 3D print would look like. You can see where the filament's been stacked layer by layer. And this is what the inside of a common FDM model looks like. The models usually aren't solid. They're commonly 20 to 30% plastic and the rest is air. This is known as infill. This can be set inside the slicer. So, are you ready to get into 3D printing? If you like to tinker and you have some patience, 3D printing can be a great hobby. I do warn you, it can be somewhat addictive. If you're getting into 3D printing because you need accurate representation of your creations and you need it to just print every time, you might want to look into a 3D printing service. Check out 3D Hubs. Either way, 3D printing is a great tool for many applications. I hope you found this video helpful. It is a very high level view of 3D printing and meant for people that don't have a 3D printer or just want to see what this whole thing's all about. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and as always, thanks for watching. Acrylonitrile butadiene styrene and PET, polyurethane, and PET, polyethylene terephthalate.